<laughs> All right, our, our next uh, is, is speaker, uh, is Dr. Nanditha Krishna. Um, she is the director of the uh, C.P. Ramaswamy uh, Foundation. It is an environmental education center here, and its mission is that it strives to increase awareness and knowledge of key target groups, particularly school children, local communities, women, etc. And uh, this sort of continues on on the, on the uh, part that has been opened by Anil. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ka Dr. Kartikeya Sarabhai for inviting me here to meet and speak before all of you a very, very eminent group of gathering of people involved in education for sustainable development. Um, we have been working in this area for s about 25 years and I'm going to talk about what our experience was and what we have come to realize is absolutely necessary because we talk about sustainable development but none of this is possible if we do not live sustainability. So my talk today is going to be from education to action, changing lifestyles, preparing the teacher and the student for sustainable living. To quote Mahatma Gandhi, earth provides enough to satisfy every man's need but not for every man's greed. So if we want to make that uh, happen, we have to change our lifestyles. Now over the years, uh, I think there's enough awareness in this country the Ministry of Environment's National Environmental Awareness Campaign, thereafter the Supreme Court ruling on making environmental education compulsory. All this has brought about tremendous knowledge and there's en there anybody could get up and tell you what is photosynthesis and you know why we have to preserve the environment. We have clear objectives, appropriate content, related activities and whatever is learnt is new, it goes beyond traditional disciplines. There are very colorful resource materials. We also have been involved in bringing out textbooks, both at the national and the state levels. Apart from that, schools use colorful audiovisual aids, vari uh, various activities, and so on. The syllabus is improved, there are good textbooks, etc. But our students know everything. But learning by rote, which is the Indian system is easily forgotten. Unfortunately, supplementary reading remains in libraries. There are l there's little time for acti activities or attitudinal change. And unfortunately, there's no change in values. All this is oriented towards learning. You know, they learn about the environment like they learn maths or physics or anything else. But how does the student become an environmentalist at the end of this exercise? And that is what exercised us because the limitations are that the teacher has to achieve set goals, complete the syllabus and the principal or the management of the school is restrained by time and costs. How many young people know that Vande Mataram, Sujalam, Supalam, Malayada, Sheetalam it celebrates our environment. How many young people know that? I don't think many adults know that either. Whenever I mention it, even in a group of environmentalists, they say, oh yeah, we never thought about it. Now, on the other hand, we have projects, the project methods where we have investigation and research. We take up a project like what happened to in the Nilgiris following the conversion of Shola forest to tea estates or uh, what happens when forests are overgrazed by cattle. So again, this is very theoretical. They go through the internet, they go through books. Some of the projects have outdoor activities where they learn a code of behavior. It increases knowledge, it cre increases sensitivity, it increases conceptual awareness, computer modeling, simulation, skills development, etc., etc. But this is again one single project that is time bound, limited skills development and the major problem is that the action to implement these solutions is not easy. So what, are the con what were the constraints? The constraints for the management or the principal of the school is economics, for the teacher is the syllabus, the student 
EE, environmental education, becomes just one more subject. Then we, we have been working both in rural and urban areas, and I felt that it's the urban uh, world which is really impinging on the environment because rural people for them it's survival whereas in urban areas we want electricity we want air conditioning we want cars we want petrol so much more so we launched this green schools of india program which is based on the curriculum so it's not a problem for the teachers it's supervised by the teacher coordinator and it's implemented by the students the most important thing is that this has to lead to a value system the ethics of environmental conservation it has to become a part of the students lifestyle he has to change his lifestyle and the student has to implement it so the students carry out systematic environmental management improve the standards in their schools they have to reduce their resource use and then the curriculum is enriched through practical experience the student develops personal and social responsibility for the school environment and this is based on the concept the ancient indian concept of the panchabhutas earth air water space and fire prithvi vayu apa akasha agni and we took up five area, uh, six areas specifically waste reduction and recycling greening the campus animal welfare which come under earth air pollution which is air energy conservation which is fire water conservation which is water we've left out space i think uh, young people know more about space than we do but at the moment let's just try and get our earth in order the activities are carried out on a full regu full year regular basis and it's a hands on involvement by the students so the students get a sense of achievement and it creates a change in their attitude and most important their lifestyles now here i just want to digress a little bit and say that our center cpr environmental education center has been involved in the documentation and publication of uh, material on sacred groves sacred trees sacred animals sacred rivers and water bodies sacred mountains precincts gardens of india and in fact we have an envis website for those of you who are interested i'll give it to you later we are documenting the ecological heritage and traditions of each indian state and we've restored over 50 sacred groves in south india alone so our environmental education involves visits to these groves by teachers by students so we set up this questionnaire for environmental auditing and based on our indian values our traditions of conserving the environment this is a questionnaire which the student carries out right through the year